What's up guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. I'm back for week two. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to see if I'm, I'm not in focus. You have to sit back. Am I? If I'm right here, you're okay, in focus. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Welcome back. I think, I think. Hold on, wait, come up to the camera. I don't know. No, Honestly, it's because I'm too dark, that's what it is. We just, maybe put on, let me see. Wait, let, I'm gonna let it lock on you, and then I'll put it in manual. Yeah, right there. Yeah, I forgot already. I think both of Focus? Nope. You go I back. really can't tell. Now let's see if I'm in focus. Back up a little bit. More. And come forward. No. Wait, you might be in focus right there. I think I am. Okay. Go, uh, let me see. Good. Next, uh, yeah. All right, cool. What's up, every guy? Uh, every guy. Every guy. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to week two of Marcella Beatty Vlogs. I have my guest with me today, Justin Soto, my fellow hustler. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to create a hustle. I've got four steps for you guys that I have laid out. We're gonna get into the topics, but first I want you guys to remember, please tap that subscribe button if you enjoy this video. So tap it at the end, uh, but as a start out, go ahead and like the video if you like the last one. Let us know in the comment section below some other things you guys want me to speak about or make more videos about in the future. We are talking about how to create a hustle. And the first thing I wanna talk about is finding something that works, whether it be your passion or not. So first thing I wanna say is your hustles don't have to be your passions. I learned that very early on when I was trying to figure out if I could, uh, if I have to remember what my first thing I wanted to do was. Oh, there it was. So me and Justin actually started our first hustle together, which was, uh, we started a t-shirt company. <laughs> well, it was supposed to be a clothing company, but it ended up just being shirts in the beginning. And we here, never grew out of that. we never grew out of it because to be completely honest with you, it almost felt like a passion because him and I still love clothes, but it just wasn't something that could become lucrative like we wanted it to be at the time. We just didn't have enough capital. We just didn't have, we had our hearts in it, but we just didn't really know what to do with it. And it just wasn't the best thing that we could possibly do at that moment. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah, my we opinion. just didn't know anything about yeah. business. Yeah. We didn't know anything about business yet, so it really just wasn't what we needed to do. We needed something that would kind of get our heads in gear for a, a little bit more of a professional realm. So that being said, for us, at least for me, what I found, which he's doing the same thing pretty much that I'm doing is, we picked up cameras and the hustle became lucrative pretty fast, um, faster than most of the people who you probably know that decided they want to pick up a camera and do B-grade photography. You know, we decided to take it to the next level and actually start businesses out of it. Um, and the hustle is, is for sure, I want to say this, the hustle is not easy. It never is, no matter what you do. But the best thing you can do for yourself is to find something that does work. So over time, proven, it's been proven that if you have a camera in your hand, you can make something of yourself with it. It all just depends on what you kind of want to put into it. The next step to this is uh, building a portfolio. So once you have your hustle figured out, obviously the next step is building a portfolio. You mm -hmm. can't go anywhere without a portfolio being built. So I'm gonna give that to my boy Justin to explain that to y'all as he does perfect. If you guys don't know his Instagram yet, it is Justin Soto underscore, yes, sir. and he's got Soto Digital Media. Go check out both of his pages. You pay really close attention to his grids. They are beautiful, much better than mine, so. I do appreciate the compliment. Um, I guess branding for the sake of, you know, or not branding, but portfolio work for photography and videography is definitely like a lot of step, is a step that a lot of photographers and videographers kind of are slow to get started doing. Um, a lot of times, especially nowadays, people are just trying to get photos for Instagram, which is great, because you have a lot of people that see your work on Instagram. But um, it's very important to make sure that you're focusing on getting really professional pieces that you can actually show brands or people so that they can actually see it and want to work with you. So um, I feel like a lot of photographers and videographers take a while to get there. So a great way to just start working on your portfolio is, is if you want to do brand work is maybe do like spec pieces. So if you like Vans shoes, you know, maybe do a Vans shoes shoot. Or if you like weddings, if you have a family member that's about to have a wedding, you know, uh, be like, hey, I'll shoot it for free and then just freaking try to kill it. Uh, yeah. Even maybe put some of your own money into it because it'll pay back. Other people will see it. That goes on your portfolio. And a lot of people, like I said, do a lot of Instagram work and not portfolio work. And there is a difference because this is the work you're going to actually show the people that you're trying to book and land those clients. So, um, yeah, that's just very make sure you, you know, work on that and grow that and continue to grow your portfolio. I mean, I feel like a lot of people don't work on that. As I mean, should. and the, the key piece of that, too, that something that he said from the very jump, which 
I still argue with him about it, but that's just who I am, even though sometimes I shouldn't, but niching down is a very good thing yeah. um, for most people. I didn't even mention that. You know, I mean, yeah. it, it, it basically, I mean, if you go on his page, you can see he's definitely stuck to a niche and it shows and it helps him in his endeavors. I'm not saying that not niching down is a bad thing. I'm not saying that niching is, it just, you gotta decide what you wanna do. And if that works for you, which for most people, it does uh, prove to be you know, profitable to just be in a niche. Yeah, beneficial. I mean, I mean, I will say this, like, especially with niching down, because I know we do talk yeah. about this, like, it doesn't always have to be a niche to a specific type of shit. Like, yes, that does help. So if like, you just do weddings, you just do weddings, if you just do brands, yeah. you just do brands. But sometimes niching down just means also just creating an aesthetic. Yeah. So like, if you like to shoot car stuff and maybe fashion stuff, you maybe could do that, but like, how does your they photos look? Together. Do they all kind of still go together in a way? Like, do you shoot maybe fashion with cars and you kind of like blur the lines a little bit, but do you have an aesthetic and edit that kind of is niche down? Exactly. Yeah. So, so just to tie that one off on a bow, because that is step number two, I wanted to say too, I am, after all these years of denying this man, I will give him full credit. I think his theory about niching down, like so many other pros, is correct, and I will be niching down here very soon. I have a hard time, like so many of you, trying to figure out exactly what it is I wanna do because I wanna do so many other things. So I can speak to you guys from that perspective and let you know that is a problem. You should 110% have your idea figured out before you start to do, uh, before you start tying it all together to do brand, brand what? Just brand work or just photography and video. Yeah, when you're job. building your portfolio, yeah. you wanna make sure you have that in mind. And I'll tell you why, leading into the next step, which is brand awareness and outreach. You don't want to reach out to clients or other companies without having your actual ideas set in mind. So if you come to them confused, you're only going to confuse them, which mm -hmm. will in turn probably allow you to definitely not get any more business from them or anyone else, which that is a key portion of how you grow your business. But yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I will say like, as far as branding goes, um, going back to the niche subject, yeah, your niche down. So like, now you can build your brand around that. So it's like Apple, they, they niche down to only a couple products. They don't, they're not like Samsung. They don't have washing machines and TVs and everything. Yeah. They have a very specific thing, iPads, laptops, and phones, right? And then they have the other little items, but those are their main items. And they're able to niche down and really make that super good. So if it's like, if you do weddings, if you do brands, if you do you know portrait work, niche down to that, and then now you can build a brand around that. So if you just do portrait work, you're constantly posting that, you're constantly putting that on your website. You're constantly reaching out to people that want portfolio mm -hmm. work or whatever the case may be. And now it's easier to build your brand and how professional, how, what's that aesthetic in your portfolio? What's that aesthetic in your wedding photography? And then you're able to kind of, you know, just you're actually able to grow it. Because yeah. if you're all over the place, it's so hard to grow. Yeah. And this is something I always it, tell because Marcel yeah. loves to do a lot of different things. He and he's good at doing a lot of things. We both We both are. We both most love people to do all kinds of stuff. You yeah. Know? It's just it's yeah. not beneficial to your business growth. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like I'm saying I'm coming into this video. I've told you guys from last video and that's gonna be my motto moving forward. No matter what is at stake, the only thing I wanna do is provide great content and great value. I'm telling you from the start till now. He's done a lot better of a job as far as growing a business than I have. And I've learned a lot from him and he's learned a lot as well from me. But together, ultimately, us going down two different paths is what taught me the most. You know, and he is much further along as far as his brand's growth goes. And mine is a little bit confused. And the reason for that is simply because I tried to do too much things at once. And a key thing that I think really stands out is always looking for the quick buck. I'm going to tell you guys that right now. The best thing you can do is just learn to take things as they come and invest instead of look for the quick buck going everywhere. Because that's what motivated me and fueled me. I'd say, hey, you know, I don't do weddings, but it's 1500 by this weekend, so I'll right. take it. You know what I mean? And you can do that, but what I would say is I'm don't. Trying to do that sometimes. Yeah, yeah, but don't Especially post when you're getting it. Started. I say don't post it unless it fits what you. So, like, he'll t he might do a wedding, but it'll fit his aesthetic, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It'll be specific photos. And I, I would probably wouldn't put on my portfolio. Yeah, and that's what, what it, that's what I'm saying. So you don't wanna you don't wanna have things you can do jobs. Even if it's good. Right. Like like I was even debating on recently I got flown out to Arkansas to shoot a boating company and I'm about to shoot fly to Boston in a month and a half to go shoot for another boating company and Boating's not really what I do. I do more car and lifestyle, yeah. car, car fashion kind of lifestyle stuff. A lot of lifestyle work. Yeah. I kind of niche, niche down to lifestyle work, but it's funny because it's like boating, does that kind of go into lifestyle? Not a lot of people have boats. Yeah. A lot of people have cars, they can relate to that. You can tie it in. It but just... but yeah, so I was like, but it's also just, how do I make it, make it fit into my aesthetic? So 
you know, that's that's a exactly. decision you have to make. Do I want to put this in my portfolio? But yeah. And the thing is, if he goes in that, if he goes with that in his mind too, because I'm not saying that mm -hmm. every opportunity that you get, you shouldn't, you know, you want to stick to a certain amount. He went into it, I'm assuming, with the boating in mind, like, how can I tie this in? Before he absolutely just said, this is just a side work game. That's true. You I didn't know? even think about that. I did think yeah. about that. I was like, let me at least get one shot that makes sense around the kind of stuff that I create, you know? Exactly. And then the boating company can have all those other stuff that would pertain to their business and stuff like that. But that was something I had in mind. With all that in mind, the next step and final phase, even though we did skip a lot of things that you will find out for yourself in between, but we'll be back for that with more videos. Come on, you good? The final phase is purely just grinding it out. So I had to, this was the this was the main step, the main reason why I brought Justin along. Him and I both have seen this process through the beginning. We've been through so many things and so many changes. We started back when it was cool to have a camera in your hand and we kind of phased out and now we're not at the level of status that we'd like to be. But again, that just goes to show that, you know, we're still hustling and the dream hasn't died because this is something that we actually care about and want to do. We put in the time. And, and let me, let me mention yeah, really quick that, I mean, if you're someone that does creative work, you build websites, you do photography, whatever, yeah. um, you paint, <laughs> but it <laughs> yeah. takes a long time. Like yeah. you see the big guys that are photographers, they're all like 30, you know what I'm saying? Literally. We're 23 years old. So it's like, there's still so much time. You, you got to grind it out. And that's, and that's like kind of the thing of, of our generation too, is instant gratification. Mm -hmm. When you're building a hustle, a lot of people start their hustles because they're in a situation. Most people start it that way, which I'm not saying there's any right way to start it. You're not starting this because you're in a situation where you're trying to get away from something else that you didn't like so you can get onto something better. You want to start it because this is simply just the right thing to do. It's mm. the smartest thing you can do. I'll preach this forever. The smartest thing anyone can do is start their own hustle, start their own business. Mm -hmm. It just is. You learn a lot, you uh, have more freedom in your life, and you also get to choose exactly who you want to be. The grind though, the grind is the most important part. So the days where, you know, I would slack and that there's been plenty. There were days where he was not, you know, and it shows he's much further along, like I said. And another key piece of that too is education. Education, which I have only really been surrounding myself. You know, it's not, it's just like athletes in high school where they say, uh, hustle beats talent mm. when talent doesn't work. And it's the fact for everything you do. If you learn, the more you learn, the better you become. Not just with camera work, with anything you do. Knowledge is truthfully the power. And hopefully this video provides some value to you. You know, yeah. you guys that are watching, I mean, obviously we have a lot further to go, but you guys will see the growth and, you know, hopefully we can all just kind of grow together. So. Yeah. So guys, thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'll be back next Thursday, like I said, and I will stay consistent. Um, this is Justin Soto underscore in case you missed that Instagram tag earlier and follow him on or well, subscribe mm -hmm. to his account on YouTube. He posts great quality content. What is your YouTube account? Just YouTube Justin about? Soto. So if you guys want to see some photography stuff, Justin Soto on YouTube. That's this it. is the niche master. Make sure you guys go check out all his work and I'll see y'all next week for another video. Don't forget to tap that like button, drop a comment below and subscribe. Thank y'all.